He's traded the streets of Connecticut for those of Toronto. I feel calm and free here in Canada, and so do my kids. Learning to see Canada as my home, uh, that's what I'm trying to do right now. Jason Stanley, 55, is a philosopher and a leading expert on fascism, and he fled Donald Trump's America to teach here. Academics are leaving America, like people are leaving America in droves. I've already done videos of people just leaving, going to Mexico because of cost of living and because of the politics right now in America. But in today's video, we're going to be looking at academics, now the professors who teach in universities, who are leaving America for other countries because there is this war on education in America. Now, enough talking. Let's just continue with the video. What I love about teaching at the Monk School is that we have experts on every part of the world, centers studying every part of the world. So it is the absolute ideal place to do work on the global fascist threat. Behind his decision, the need to work freely, safe from the Trump administration's attacks on science and democratic institutions. I would have remained in the United States had Trump not won the election. My presence at Yale made Yale a target. Now, I'm completely unconstrained. I can say whatever I want. And to me, that's what Canada means right now, a place where you can say uh, critical things about other countries, critical things about the United States without fear. Okay, so I know people, there are two types of people who might watch this video. There are some who will look and say like, well, good riddance, he left. You know, those are mostly MAGA supporters who are going to be thinking, you know, who think universities are liberal institutions who are indoctrinating our children, you know, things like that. But for others, this is going to be heartbreaking because there are two places you should never bring politics into. That is religion, number one, according to me, religion. And then the other one is education. Because religion, if your priest is telling you how to vote, run away. If your politician is telling you how to pray, run away. It's same with education. If you see politicians are fighting education, they are saying no more education, education is bad or whatever, run away. Because every civilization, education plays an important role in it. So there is a reason why they is fighting. They are fighting education. They are defunding research in universities. They want to make the population dumber and dumber so that you lack critical thinking skills. I know that's going to annoy people, especially who support this government. But the truth, that's the truth. Like, you want me to lie to you? Like, if you want to lie to yourself, fine. But I personally want to lie to you. If you're fighting education, they want to make the population dumber so that they can pass whatever policies they want that are harmful without any resistance because you don't have critical thinking skills. But let's continue. Like Jason Stanley, a record number of academics have left or are planning to leave the United States for Europe and Canada. All right, let's get started. We're a little late. <laughs> So we want to talk about uh, morality and values. The reason repeated threats and more than $4 billion in cuts by the Trump administration to research it deems woke. The health sector has also been hit. Brian Rathbun taught at the University of Southern California until 2024. Military funding or any other policy issue, those are considered attitudes. And then the question is, are our attitudes a function of our values? This international relations expert moved to Canada with his wife and colleague Nina. Both say the attacks on research in the U.S. go far beyond Trump's own political targets. It's a very demoralizing state of affairs, I would say. There's a lot of uncertainty. Even those who haven't had their grants canceled... Uh, or put on hold uh, are nevertheless feeling the pain of that because so many of those grants have uh, 
fund other operations at a university. So it has a way of affecting everyone, even though it's ostensibly just directed at a, a certain number of grant holders. I mean, yeah, this is going to affect America quite badly because now all these intellectuals are going to be leaving. They're going to be going to Europe, Canada, and other Western countries. And America is going to be behind. America used to lead the ways in many things, education included. Like some of the best universities in the world rankings are in America, a lot of them. But now this administration is fighting education so much. They are cutting grants. They are making it political. And that is super dangerous, especially when it comes to things like healthcare. Because you cannot politicize healthcare. You're telling people don't take Tylenol, you know, inject bleach, you know, things like those. Like those are some caveman mindset. Like you you need an intellectual, you need somebody who has done science, who has done research, who's a doctor <laughs> to recommend treatment and things like those. But for most people, they don't see that. They just see university. They see it as indoctrination place so that the people don't vote MAGA, people don't vote Republican. And that's not it. Like it is, uh, it is something that is going to affect America for decades. It's going to affect for decades. That's the reality. It's quite sad. But let's continue. I would also say that it's led to reductions in entering PhD classes. And that's been um, really problematic for students just who happened to be applying for graduate school at this particular moment. And so it has real impacts for the pipeline for academia in the future. The presidents of Canada's top universities have put out an op-ed in a local press calling on Ottawa to finally make Canada a global leader in scientific research, as its current budget still lags well behind G7 and OECD averages. I think a real shift in mindset is needed to restore Canada's place as a global leader in science, in knowledge creation and innovation. It's clear we need to reinvest, especially if we want to seize this opportunity, what I call an unfortunate opportunity. Because we have to remember that what's happening reflects a global weakening of science, given the United States' dominant role in research since World War II. Across the country, some local governments have taken matters into their own hands, launching charm offensives to lure top American talent. Montreal, Canada's second largest city, is home to four major international universities. Hi, can you tell me how many CVs we've received so far for the researchers' campaign? We're at about 100 applications, or at least people who've expressed interest. We've already passed 100 CVs? Yeah, yeah, that's great. At the city's request, this economic development agency ran a summer-long ad campaign across major U.S. campuses, from California to Massachusetts. We've had a lot of engineers, a lot of mathematicians too, but also people in international relations, and many with several years of experience already. Not just those starting out in research. The campaign quickly led to an unprecedented wave of applications from American academics. Yeah, like, uh, sometimes I see things like this and I honestly, I believe the world, some people are just born to destroy the world. Like, uh, at, as, a, <laughs> as I'm growing older, I keep on believing some people are just born, their sole purpose is to destroy the world. And that is what's happening. Because, like, how can you see the amount of brain drain that is going to happen here? You're seeing engineers, scientists, and everybody running away, but you are perfectly fine with that. Like, these are people who are if super important in a society. Like, I did my undergrad in America. I wanted to do my graduate education in America, but first of all, I decided no, because that the amount, the cost is ridiculous. And, you know, I'd rather just do it elsewhere. So seeing these people fleeing, the intellectuals fleeing, Who's going to be left behind? The damage is, that's being done is it's insane. But let's just finish the 10 seconds of this video. 
Our campaign focused on openness and inclusivity. We went with a simple message, Montreal loves researchers. It targeted people driven by innovation, knowledge and science, many of them in healthcare. All those applications will be shared with Greater Montreal Universities that took part in and supported the campaign so that they can match the researchers' profiles with available positions. According to a survey published in Nature magazine in March, three-quarters of researchers say they're ready to leave the United States if the Trump administration maintains its budget cuts. So it's a loss for America and a win for other countries. That, that, that's what it is. So let me know in the comments if you are like, good riddance, they are leaving. Goodbye, you liberal woke, whatever nonsense you guys think of. Or if you are looking at this and saying this is very bad for America. Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, consider liking, subscribing, and of course, share this on all the networks. I'll see ya. Oh my goodness, all the networks. Wow. All the networks.